And joining me now to discuss this is Archbishop Salvador Cordillon from the Archdiocese of San Francisco. Your Excellency, welcome back. So great to see you. Uh, first off, I'd like to get your reaction to the vote. And also, could you give us some insight into those discussions that you all have had in regards to the document? Well, the document has uh, matured over time. It was somewhat restructured and uh, someone amplified. The document we were presented to vote on for this meeting was only minor really changes were made to it. There was a real sense of consensus and cohesion around this document. One point that was brought up was giving more emphasis to the connection between the Eucharist and, and the poor and all kind of vulnerable, marginalized people. This, of course, is very ancient in our tradition. Uh, all the saints, St. John Chrysostom in particular, is uh, preached very forcefully about that. The Eucharist requires us to care for the poor. Up to Pope Benedict XVI and his encyclical uh, Sacramentum Caritatis, he emphasizes this sacrament of love of charity calls us to care for the poor. So that was given more emphasis. And then there were a few other little sort of tweaks made here and there. But the document that the Doctrine Committee uh, produced was accepted uh, very robustly, very uh, uh, gratefully by all of the bishops. So to me, it demonstrates that the process works. The, the committee drafted an original document. They consulted the various pertinent commit other committees of the conference. All of the bishops had an opportunity to submit modifications in advance of this meeting. The document was somewhat restructured from the original one, and what ended up being produced is a very beautiful and I think well-balanced document uh, that will be very valuable for our teaching about uh, the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist and what it means to be properly disposed to receive him in the Eucharist. Yeah, and I'm wondering, how important do you think this is? The importance is now to be determined. What is important is how this document is implemented in the diocese and around the country and the, uh, what, what is actually done with it. We're seeing this as sort of the doctrinal basis of the other Eucharistic project we have going on now, Eucharistic Revival. So this is a teaching document, so the doctrinal basis for this multi-year, three-year process of celebrating the Eucharist and rekindling Eucharistic devotion and love at the diocesan parish level, culminating in a, in a grand uh, national event, a Euchar uh, National Eucharistic Congress. So what, how important is it? is to be determined, but I see it as having great potential as the doctrinal basis of this Eucharistic revival process and as a great resource for bishops in their diocese. And I understand uh, later today the bishops will also vote on if there should be uh, a National Eucharistic Congress in 2024. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Yes, we actually, uh, miraculously enough, ended our morning agenda early, so we're able to move that up from the afternoon agenda to the morning. So we just ended our morning session with that uh, agenda item. The uh, idea is that we would begin on a diocesan level with, uh, with Corpus Christi processions next year, July 19th of next year, and that would, would launch this Eucharistic revival process. And then uh, we would have uh, Eucharistic missionaries, preachers to preach in, in dioceses at uh, diocesan convocations, convocations of priests, other way, however bishops want to utilize them in their diocese. You can call upon them, they'll be all around the country. Then a uh, parish celebration the following year, and then again culminating in this National Eucharistic Congress that will take place in Indianapolis July 17th through the 21st in uh, 2024. And Your Excellency, before I let you go, curious uh, your take on how things are going so far and also what you're looking forward to from the rest of the meeting. I've been a bishop for 19 years now, and when I first became a bishop in 2002, the conference had recently begun a practice of a morning of prayer after the meeting, so our, the meeting of the full body of bishops goes on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Thursday morning there would be an optional morning of prayer. This time, for the first time, we began the meeting with the morning of prayer Monday morning. And I was I was hoping we would be able to do this sometime, and we, we did. I think it made a big difference 
It put a whole different tone to our meeting together. We also had perpetual adoration of the Blessed Sacrament, and bishops and staffs were able to sign up for times even all throughout the night. So I think the primacy of prayer that being the focus of this meeting has made a big difference, and I sense a great, a great deal more of, of cohesion among the bishops throughout the country. Well, Archbishop Cordelio, thank you so much for your time today, and God bless you. You're welcome. Thank you. You too.